Hi, welcome to week three of our world geography class. This video is meant to give you a quick overview of the content that we're going to be addressing throughout the week. We'll go over our agenda and some resources and activities that we're going to be um, utilizing throughout this week. So for the lessons that we'll be covering, we'll be going over Canada's unification, discussing the aspects of living in the United States, immigration in Canada and the U.S., the difference in policies and the experiences of moving to both. And then on our last day of the week, we'll be conducting a current events session where you'll be looking into a news story or a newspaper article that you're going to present through the five W's and maybe including a discussion of why that specific event matters to you or why others should know about it. The big questions that we're going to be addressing are the following. First, how did Canada become a nation? What is it like living in the US and Canada? How do Americans and Canadians make a living? So we're gonna be looking at some economy in this lesson. And then the natural and human resources, how the, these in America and Canada help shape the economy. So first we're going to be reading and reviewing Canada's unification. This is still a part of 2.4, so it's a continuation. We're going to look at how um, it won independence and how it unified its regions, specifically how it developed from a group of colonies to a nation through a process. We'll be utilizing a timeline, labeling that timeline just so we can familiarize ourselves with the historical events that happened and why they're important. Then we're going to do a part of my favorite things, which is to look at the visual diagrams and analyze them when we look into immigration. So we'll define what immigration is when compared to migration and look at these trends of types of immigrants or specific countries that people immigrated from to the United States and Canada. Um, we'll look at the population uh, density of these specific tribes or ethnic groups. Um, and how they, you know, contributed in some way to these countries after they migrated. So this is exactly what I was just talking about, the population density. You guys are very familiar with that. You're going to make inferences as to why some areas are more concentrated than others and why other areas are left empty. So you'll be, you know, analyzing the map and utilizing the key while inferring the reasons in terms of geographical location. It could be because more of them are cities or capitals of certain areas. Some might be near the ocean, some might be in maybe more hot regions or things like that. So you'll be inferring and conducting that analysis for that. Then we're gonna talk about living in the United States and Canada in more depth. So which nation has a larger area of land without economic use? Why is that, th why is that there? Um, and what explains the location of these urban areas according to what is offered um, there from the resources, whether it be iron, oil, or let's say um, natural gases or coal. So you're gonna be looking into that. Um, it's a different type of map that shows you land use and major resources, which is pretty cool. And then you guys will also provide um, examples of these maps that you come across. Then we'll look at why people move from one area to another within the Canada or United States. So after they're in there, maybe after a couple of years, they'll move from specific cities or provinces to another area. So we'll look at that historically as well. Um, just to enhance your political understanding as well, and this might help you when you're making a decision um, of where you want to move to for your education, whether it be the United States or Canada, it's really important that you guys look at the immigration policies. So again, we'll look at that through a guide. It's called the GIS guide. So it gives you a helpful comparative exploration of the policies and the um, actual procedure of immigration in both countries, especially as a student. And then we'll look at um, the reasons 
of immigration or which system of these two different countries um, kind of promotes or what, what areas of immigration it promotes and the reasons people actually move to them. Do they support them, you know, um, bring the rest of their family or do they help them enhance their job skills or is it which one supports more humanitarian reasons for immigration? We'll look at that through the, um, the visual uh, graphs in the pie charts that we are practicing to use. We'll also look at an interactive gallery for Canada's cultural heritage. We'll see how this compares to the U.S. as well. well. You can create one, especially since it consists of diverse population um, in terms of different cultures, but you'll ask yourself if there actually is a cultural heritage there, um, you know, while considering the Native American perspective or how that was the initial um, culture or people there before it was before the land was officially uh, claimed and occupied and uh, found. Then this, we, while we move on to our current events um, lesson, we're going to be utilizing a new summary sheet um, where you're going to be using the five W's and also looking at the categories or what specific categories these articles go under. So more of an understanding of the structure of an actual newspaper. And that's basically it from what we will be covering. In terms of the activities, I did give an overview, but keep in mind you'll have interactive galleries, interactive maps, visual graph analysis, lesson checks for 2.4 and 2.5 Q&As about uh, Q&A discussions about Canada and the US and of course the current events to bring everything together towards the end of the week. You might also be um, uh, labeling some geographical regions in Canada and the US. So for maps, so we're going to have map exercises where you memorize these provinces and territories. Um, so that'll be exciting. I know some of you really wanted to do some map labeling. So this is where we'll be integrating that. And that's basically it. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to me through email or in person. And I hope you have a great rest of your week.